Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Lexus LS 500h. This is actually to open the boot, unlock the car, lock the car, and it says Lexus right there with the Lexus logo at the back. Straight away we're going to be opening the engine bay of this magnificent vehicle. And as you can see, it obviously gets hydraulic struts, but the way the engine bay has been done is beautiful. Everything is kind of covered. There it says Lexus Hybrid Drive, and I love the fact that those wires are finished in orange. Anyways, you get insulation right there. Let's close this. Okay. You see this spindle grill. This is the 3D effect spindle grill. It actually has more than 5,000 elements and took Lexus three and a half years to make. And because this is a hybrid, it has this blue tinge inside the Lexus logo. There's a front parking camera. You get chrome, a lot of chrome on this car. Yeah, that's right. Meanwhile, this is the pre-facelift model. The facelift model has some changes to the lights as well as the bumper. And I'll keep telling you what all has changed. Meanwhile, these are sort of Z-shaped lights. They look absolutely beautiful and stunning. They get three projectors, okay, dynamic swipe indicators, which actually have 16 LEDs. These are matrix units and absolutely fantastic at night. Great throw as well. Meanwhile, you also get headlight washers. Now, usually with the headlight washers, they spray twice. This one only sprays once. You get front parking sensors. Look at the car. It's absolutely stunning. It's 1.9 meters wide. It's very low. It's 1.45 meters in terms of height. Meanwhile, the length is more than 5.1 meters. The wheelbase is actually more than 3.1 meters. And it gets these amazing chrome wheels. Now, these wheels have been designed to actually reduce sound and noise. Yeah, and they're also light wheels. Meanwhile, the tire size happens to be 245, 45, 20s. Love the chrome on the wheels. They look really awesome. Okay, you obviously get a camera right here. And uh, the mirrors also have a different kind of a design. They don't touch the body. They've been designed in a way that they reduce the noise from outside and also for better aerodynamic efficiency, aerodynamics in a Lexus car. Really the focus, it seems. But the car is really very long. It's actually more than 5.2 meters, not more than 5.1, but more than 5.2 meters long. It says multi-stage hybrid. Ground clearance isn't a lot, but right now I have reduced the ride height. You can increase the ride height. I love the wheels on this car and love the way the chrome has been done. It's got a very unique six window design. One at the front, the front windscreen, the rear windscreen makes it two, three, four, five and six. Two sort of quarter glasses, very nice and very unique. I've never seen such a thing ever in my life. Obviously, you've got a lot of chrome around the windows as well. You get chrome on the door handles too. Coming to the rear with the facelifted model, they've actually removed chrome from the tail light. But on this model, you've got plenty of chrome, including here as well. I mean, they've gone absolutely bonkers in terms of chrome. Now, again, you get the dynamic swipe indicators here. And I love the way Lexus is written. The tail light attention detail is amazing nonetheless. Meanwhile, it has got 21 LEDs for the rear indicators. Says LS500H right there, Lexus, Lexus logo. A very subtle spoiler. In fact, there's a high mounted stop lamp there. I don't know if you can see it. Now, there's a high mounted stop lamp as well. Okay, you get chrome on the rear bumper too. And you get rear parking sensors, of course. And there's a reverse parking camera right there. All right. Now, coming to the other side, actually, it looks the same from both the sides. What you're going to do, we're going to open the boot. Now, when you come near the boot, now it automatically opens. It has this feature wherein smart trunk, something of that sort. The car seems to be locked at the moment. Here, we unlock the car. There's actually a button right here. I can just press the button. And there, the boot opens. Yeah, it is a power tailgate. Some insect is making too much noise. Okay, please silent. The vlog is on. Okay, like, share, subscribe. The boot is not that big. It's just 430 liters. And there's no spare wheel either because... Here you get the battery, yeah. It is a 84 cell battery. It's actually the regular car battery. The battery which powers the hybrid system is actually having 84 cells. Boot is not really big enough, that's sorry actually. But this is very soft and nice and there's sort of a hook here and lot of hooks around just to secure your luggage. Okay, power tailgate, press a button and there it shuts. And things are very smooth in this car. Now, it takes its own sweet time, but doesn't make any noise whatsoever. You obviously get a shark fin antenna. I need to read something which is there in the boot. So what we're going to do, we're going to open the boot. There it opens. Now, if you have a child, I'm sorry to say this. It says it very clearly. Never allow a child to operate the power trunk lid. I don't understand why. It's not like the child is driving the car. It is just a trunk, which means that the parents have to take the responsibility of putting the luggage always inside, which is kind of cumbersome for them. Okay, now let's open this also. Again, this opens separately. You would expect it to open along with the doors being opened, but no, 
that is not the case here so in order to open it there is a button right here here i press it okay i'm going to keep rotating around the car opening stuff because unfortunately that's how it is lexus is very different from what we've usually seen it says premium unleaded fuel only yeah it says no to diesel by the way obviously lexus doesn't make diesels it used to with the suvs the lx 450d revving the motor and we are off and you can see all that torque kicks in all of a sudden which is discontinued in india i love the design you know sloping roof line what a beautiful car unlike what you usually see with limousines this is a very different take on a super luxury sedan well done lexus okay now first and foremost you're going to open the door you see the seats actually moves back yeah it's automatically moving back because it's greeting me it wants me to be comfortable while getting inside so it's doing that it says lexus right here but once i get inside okay here i'm going to close the door see i don't have to take effort because soft door close there it pulls it in and it shuts it so it's welcome me greeted me by actually putting the seat back into place now i'm just going to open this center armrest because obviously three people cannot sit in because of this massive hump in the center and there is a screen i'm going to turn it on now the good thing is i'm going to show you how the seats work it's absolutely fantastic we're going to choose the right one now this is completely upright the seat okay now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to recline the seat just see the recline angle of the seat absolutely baffling it is the best in the segment 48 freaking degree recline angle 48 degree a person can sleep in here and you know what it has 22 way to adjust the seat 22 way adjustment for the seat you see there are three different sun blinds here as well and let me just open the window and show you all the three sun blinds open the middle one actually takes own sweet time but they've actually gone to the pain of putting three sun blinds two smaller ones that's absolutely baffling let me close it this is so freaking crazy the attention to detail so we have to actually get inside here for the sun blind as well this screen actually does everything there's no physical button in the rear which is quite surprising to me so what you're going to do we're going to just shut it and there it shuts okay it's so beautiful i don't know why they did this they could have just kept it closed all the time meanwhile there is actually a hook here i don't know for what there's a handle as well there's a speaker and light placement on the top press a button and there the light turns on now obviously you've got a mirror here along with a light which is typically the case with a lot of luxury cars and you get handled on almost every side including for the driver too okay look at the attention to detail oh my god the door pads are so amazing we'll talk about that when we get to the front but just look at it and admire the attention to detail 11.6 inch screen not a touch screen though okay but you know what it actually uses blu ray and then you can put an sd card and then I mean a lot of way for you to actually consume media and obviously there's an aux port first and foremost I need to push this back up all right there is a 12 volt charging socket there is the SD card slot as well and you can put the blu-ray disc right there now there is a magazine holder slightly scooped out but how do I increase legroom at the rear I mean legroom isn't great right now okay by limousine standards of course so what I'm going to do I'm just going to put this down they could have actually given physical buttons at the rear or along with the probably a remote you want to turn the screen on now you can do a lot of things like you can decide the climate okay you get heated as well as ventilation function for both the rear seats as well as both the front seats too and there's something known as relaxation wherein you can decide the massage you want you see there are plenty of massage options here and there are five levels for the same there's a spot heater as well but what you're going to do is you're going to get to the seat i'm going to go to the left seat where i'm sitting right now and i'm just actually going to press this for the front one and there the front seat goes all the way ahead you see the angle of the screen keeps changing accordingly so it's going to increase the legroom for me here you see there is so much legroom on offer that is crazy amount of legroom on offer oh my god this is super comfortable there the recline angle of that screen is also changing conveniently okay and i can press a button here if i want to make my self extremely comfortable to maybe probably sleep yeah one second i i press the wrong button okay now i'm going to press the right button yeah i press the right button now this seat is actually lifting itself and there's something which is going to come out from here and then i can press these buttons to actually open this for preventing any issue with under thigh support so here i press a button and there it is retracting oh my god this could have been done much better i feel the way the germans do it is just so much better because here you have to actually physically press a button that's some amount of a problem yeah i have to press a physical button to do it in german cars you just press a button and it make shows that you're sleeping the way you want good amount of leg room and knee room good amount of under thigh support amazing amount of under thigh support headroom is also good that's the reason why they have not given it a complete panoramic roof this one actually is on sliding on the inside not on the outside just to ensure there is headroom on offer in this car 
Oh my God, it's very comfortable. Good amount of leg room, good amount of knee room, good amount of under thigh support. Everything is almost perfecto. And I, I, I mean, I love the way it is done. I can extend this if I so want. So yes, space is plenty here. So what you're going to do is we're just going to put things back into place. But for that, first and foremost, I will get out of the car. And as soon as I open the door now, this is smart enough to retract to make sure that I am able to get out easily. So the seat is actually going back. I didn't press any button. It's doing it on its own. And here you get AC vents. And the center as well, you get AC vents. So this is very, very, very convenient. Okay, door pockets are big enough at the rear as well. And lovely red stitching. Attention detail is absolutely stunning in this car. And you have got height adjustable seat belts for the front passengers, of course. And at the rear, you see, beautifully done. Everything, the quality levels, even the seat belts feel so good to hold inside this car. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to press this button and I am going to make sure that the seat actually reclines the way I want it to. And there it is actually reclining. And guess what? From the front also, I can make changes to make sure the seat gets back into position. All right. I am going to go to the left one and here, oh my god, there's so many settings for this now. This is absolutely confusing. You have to actually press, you can decide what you want to do. So I've actually pressed the button and been like, okay, now I want to extend this and that extension is happening. You have to press the right buttons. If you do not, you end up going to change the seat position in a way you do not want it to happen. That is the reason it's got 22 way adjustment for the rear seats alone. 22 way adjustment. That's absolutely crazy check this out okay soft door close here i don't have to push the door close it will automatically pull it inside and close it that's also fantabulous okay now you see there are no nozzles as such on the wipers because the nozzles are actually placed on the wiper i mean it's not on the body it's on the wiper itself so that's also pretty cool and you've got a lot of sensors on this car in fact the lane keep assist is so amazing that it tries to read these white lines and if it's not able to do it not a problem it's able to mark itself with a car up front and then follow it oh my god that's absolutely maddening all right you've got request sensors on all the freaking doors and let me tell you about the absolute mad attention to detail on this car these are origami style pleats which are handcrafted and they look lovely people do leather they do carbon fiber they do aluminium they do wood and all that shit however Lexus does something else completely handcrafted. This is so beautiful. And this is a Kiriko glass ornamentation. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing. Now, this is very Japanese specific because Japanese artists do this. And Lexus has actually taken help from them. In fact, they've taken help from Japanese massage specialists who have done the massage on this car. And trust me, the massage works the best on this vehicle. In fact, attention detail is so good that when you actually approach the car and unlock it, it immediately increases the ride height of the vehicle by up to 40 mm to make sure it's easy for you to get in and out because the car is low. It does that for you. <laughs> and here, when you open the door, this bolster actually flattens. Now, car is on, it won't do it right now, but it flattens the bolster here. It raises the seat so it's easy to get in and out of the vehicle. It also increases the seat belt holder up so that it's easy for you to put the seat belt and the steering also moves. So, all this is happening, and you're like, wow, this is so amazing. Okay. It says Lexus right there. The only problem I find with this car is that it doesn't get ambient lighting, not the complex ambient lighting or the one with so many options which we get in Mercedes-Benz cars where there are 64 colors for the ambient lighting. All right, you get a proper dead pedal right there. This is to open the fuel lid. This is to open the tailgate, rather the boot of the vehicle. This is to open the hood of the vehicle. This is for the camera view and this is for the heads up display. There's a small compartment here to, I don't know, keep your diamonds probably <laughs> and my goodness, just look at the way the stitching has been done. Now, these are the controls for the outside rear view mirror adjustment. You can press a button to close the outside rear view mirrors if you so wish. Meanwhile, these are the buttons to lock or unlock the car. This is for child lock and these are the power window controls. And there's one touch up and down here. You press a button and there the sun blinds actually recline. And that's not all. The good part is you can actually adjust that seat from here. You press this button and then you can actually move that seat as well. See, I'm moving the seat. So you can save up to three people settings. Obviously, you get memory seats. However, all the seats get heated, ventilation, massage functions. The front ones are slightly different. You don't get spot heating on the front seats, but the front seats are adjustable in 28 ways. Yeah, front seats are adjustable in 28 ways. It's absolutely obnoxious. Okay, this is not what's going to help you to adjust it 28 ways. You have to go into the menu, which is a bit complex. Okay, check the nozzle. This is very nicely done. I love it. Let's get inside. Again, soft door close. Here, I don't have to do anything. It pulls it inside and closes it and the dashboard design is very very different but before that we're going to get into the seat function because this seat is so far ahead now i want to put it back into place so i just go into passenger seat adjustment and there i actually have the option of putting it right back where it belongs there i press a button and it gives me the option of return so i'm just going to return this 
and there because it has to return first and foremost the rear seat is going to go back into place i can also return the rear seat if i so wish which means that the driver can control almost everything so can the rear passenger means these two passengers are the best the one sitting vertically opposite the driver okay this is going back into place and everything is so smooth i don't know why it doesn't make any sound whatsoever just so silent and smooth somehow okay now i need to actually push the seat even further behind but i can do a full tumble from here itself so i'm just going to go back get into passenger seat adjustment and i'm just going to push this as much back as i can but the thing is it's very complex with 28 way adjust so i'm just going to press this button and then i'm going to push the seat back on my own and there it goes back yeah the seats are amazing in terms of quality really great bolstering you're not going to get tired at all and while we are at it i'm just going to open the sunroof of the car so i'll press the button to open it and there opens the sunroof now it is a smaller unit could have been massively massive in terms of size it could have been bigger now what lexus has done with the facelift they made certain changes which are essential because what is really wrong with this particular car is that it doesn't get a touch screen infotainment system now this is a 12.3 inch unit it is not a touch screen unfortunately so yeah you cannot touch it it's actually very far ahead and this whole thing is very complex to use so they have revised some of the buttons you can directly get into seat function also like you can get here also but there you can get into the ventilation function this is to open the rear sunblind this is to get into pure ev mode this is to raise the right hand of the car and this is to get into the seat settings so if i press this button i'm already into seat settings here i can adjust the driver seat the passenger seat there's something known as driver seat refresh or passenger seat refresh which is nothing but the massage function and you can see there are five massage functions they work really very nicely absolutely stunning massage and then there's something known as seat climate which lets me cool or heat either of the front seats also there is heating function for the steering wheel now once i get into reverse here i get into reverse check this out as soon as i get into reverse immediately the rear sun blind reclines even the rear seat headrest reclines so that i can easily see what's behind that's also pretty cool that is the camera the camera is nice it gets adaptive guideline there's a 360 degree monitor on the left and you can actually change the color of the car if you so wish okay you can also make changes here in terms of the camera angle you want to see and this is a 360 degree camera which means depending on where or how you're driving you are going to see different views for sure which means that you can see a side view when you need to there's a clock which is very subtly placed there's this design which actually lights up at night which is removed in the facelifted model and the facelifted model obviously gets a touch screen which makes it look a bit like the i20's interior somehow because obviously even the i20 has this continuous air vent treatment yeah you see it starts very nice and subtly this is the engine start button ac vents feel really nice these are the controls for the air conditioning and this is amazing art work trust me on this because this is the volume control and this is the tuner control and if you press this button you can turn on and off the audio system it's very smoothly integrated into each other that's beautiful okay i've just turned off the camera and as soon as i turned off the camera there you see it comes back into place and when you're usually driving the car it does it at around 15 kilometers per hour okay this is the energy monitor there is plenty of information to play with here okay trip information what is the history and i mean it's loaded but this navigation system also is pretty nice it has a split screen but the problem is now i somehow put a navigation it never let me turn it off only i could not find the command or the button to turn off the navigation it continued navigating me endlessly so that's a bit of a problem it could have been slightly better in that regard but with the touch screen i believe things will be much 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 better now there's something known as lexus climate concierge what it does is it uses infrared sensors to be able to sense the temperature of everybody inside the car and accordingly make changes to the temperature to make sure you have the best temperature it works so beautifully well now this is one of the few cars wherein actually the seat ventilation turns on on its own to get you the right climate that's how beautiful it is done auto dimming inside rear view mirror and there is a sunglass holder right there obviously you get a mirror along with a light same is the case here as well you get a mirror along with a light the steering wheel feels really very nice to hold in fact you see there is this beautiful red stitching but there is stitching inside here too for the instrument cluster that's absolutely baffling with a smaller screen but you get the fuel meter and the temperature meter on either side but this is where all the information lies in fact the cluster also changes its color basis what mode you are in so this is how you actually operate the mode of the vehicle six modes which we'll talk about when we are driving the car and uh, i honestly feel that you know they could have gone for bigger instrument cluster but it gives you all the information in fact browsing is very easy because you can browse through this here you see i can actually press the button down and see a lot of information including the energy monitor tire pressure monitoring system okay this is pretty much loaded right now i think 3.7 kilometers per liter because the car is being turned on and actually it's on battery power so it just turn off the engine and just running on battery power alone 
and there is all the information you would ever need see you get a compass you obviously get the music system lane keep assist and messages along with settings you can decide how you want the brightness of the heads up display vehicle setting meter setting and blah 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 very loaded in that sense giving you all the information you would ever need but that's not important this particular lever which you see here is to turn off the traction control or turn on and off the snow mode as well as the traction control system steering wheel is nice to hold these are the buttons for the cruise control system these are actually the buttons for the audio system and this is for the multi information display you see there are paddles which are very nice to operate this is for the wipers the wipers work really very well on this car and this is for the headlight control now both the wipers as well as the headlights obviously get the auto function and the steering wheel is nice to hold in fact the horn is amazing really very nice but you can't hear much of it on the inside because obviously it's super silent now below the front center armrest there is storage space okay there is a 12 volt charging socket along with two usb and an aux port this thing actually slides this tray slides and you can also remove the tray if you so wish so yeah plenty of space in the front for sure because there is storage space here as well twin cup holders along with a 12 volt charging socket the glove box is also big enough and there is a separate tray on the top as well Meanwhile the glove box is obviously lockable love the way they have done this stitching it's so amazing on this car and here you can put a cd if you so wish which is like too old right now because things have changed dramatically nobody uses a cd in this time and age that said the audio system is absolutely fantastic it's a mark levinson audio system it has got 23 speakers 2400 watt output it's got a 16 channel amplifier and speakers are actually in 16 places throughout the car so what you're going to do we're going to listen to an audio right away audio quality is absolutely phenomenal in fact the attention detail is amazing because you can actually even decide that if you want to delete the keyboard history that can be done too in fact i'm just going to take you into the setup menu wherein there is this amazing thing like a very weird thing as well i mean the menu is so vast now it will take you 3 4 days to just browse through it you can get into maintenance and actually decide that when was what done in terms of changing of the car and you see almost every parameter of the vehicle is seen like from engine oil oil filter wipers you can also put a personal reminder multiple options for the same as well so this is make sure that it's so freaking easy for you to remember when you change anything in the car and when the service needs to happen now the electric parking brake is hidden i'm actually seeing it for the very first time although i've driven the car 650 kilometers over the past 8 days The steering wheel obviously gets adjust both for reach as well as rake and obviously it has to be electronic. It also gets a pop-up hood in case of a crash with a pedestrian it will pop up the hood from five places four or five places to ensure that he does not get hurt. It's got 14 freaking airbags yeah that's right 14 freaking airbags to make sure you are safe obviously it gets five star rating in terms of safety and there is obviously the beautiful heads up display it is one of the best i've seen it is very big it's what 24 inches. Yeah that is a size 24 inch heads up display which is the biggest in the segment by far and this thing shows you so much information it gives you information like obviously the speed what is the mode which you're driving in and it also shows you the eco indicator how much battery is charged and also changes its color depending on the mode which you shift to and then obviously it also has a compass and in the center it gives you warnings it tells you who's calling you or who you are calling plus it also gives you navigation data really very nice and sharp meanwhile i press this button and check this out okay it gives a proper 360 degree view of the car to tell you exactly where it is placed and this is so dramatic i don't know why they have to do this spinning part it looks so good and so cool as well now they have obviously put everything in the kitchen sink in this car that is how it works oh my god what a view that's fantastic really very sweet the technology works on this car beautifully well it has got something known as aqua arm wiper blades like i told you how they work they are absolutely beautiful the asymmetrical dashboard design looks super duper awesome and super sexy as well and i think lexus has nailed it out of the park in terms of the craftsmanship in the design in terms of features in terms of aesthetics and almost everything as far as the cabin goes the only thing is this is very cumbersome to use i hate it however now it's got a touch screen which is way better also gets apple carplay and android auto connectivity with the facelift but it doesn't get a comprehensive ambient lighting system other than that i have not much to complain let's start driving right away all right we are all set to go which means coming into sport plus mode turning off the traction control i've reduced the right height of the vehicle as well we are in drive mode left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor and off we go
absolutely surreal acceleration you would never expect a toyota car to accelerate this way but this one absolutely pulls heavily thanks to the hybrid system of course which offers a lot of torque but we'll come to that in a minute first and foremost this is a heavy car it weighs 2400 kgs in spite of the fact that we use aluminum in key areas to reduce the weight of the vehicle still the battery weight the battery obviously is in the boot adds to the weight of this vehicle acceleration is really brisk there's not a spot in the power delivery or in the whole rev range where it kind of feels lackluster it just feels so enthusiastic throughout and the best thing is that you can drive it very sedately and not feel a thing not hear a thing because in eco mode it is super duper silent and talking about modes there's six freaking drive modes on offer okay out of those six drive modes there's a customizable mode as well you can customize what you want to do you can only customize three parameters that is the powertrain which happens to be the engine as well as the gearbox probably the chassis which is mainly the suspension and the climate who wants to customize the climate what we'll do is we'll actually get to the maps because the maps are also pretty cool on this car yeah back here into the map system now there is this energy monitor which you can see which i can also put it right here by changing the display the energy monitor is another very cool thing which tells you exactly how the hybrid system is working but what powers this guy it's a 3.5 liter dual vvti naturally aspirated v6 motor no freaking turbos here and the result is acceleration is super duper brisk okay you get it on the throttle at any rpm it just lunges ahead with so much enthusiasm it's absolutely shocking and how does it do that first and foremost the engine produces two 95 horsepower which comes in at 6600 rpm yeah 6600 rpm in a toyota car or rather even a lexus car is very high how have they achieved it they've used lighter components in the engine to make sure it revs higher and makes the peak power at a higher rpm which is 6600 in this case meanwhile the torque output from the engine happens to be 350 newton meters which comes in at 5100 rpm but there are two electric motors and the electric motor produces 177 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque now that 300 newton meters of torque comes right from get go that's the reason it's so punchy low down has a fantastic drivability and combined output happens to be 354 horsepower so the result is it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 5.4 seconds and has a top speed near to 250 kilometers per hour but the real magic is from the gearbox which we'll talk about in a bit because we need to launch it again it's just so freaking amazing this engine so refined so smooth you can barely hear anything that is a level of refinement and yes braking performance is stellar as well here you see left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator is going to tell me do not simultaneously press accelerate and brake pedals and off we go It is just so freaking unbelievable the, the way this car is able to accelerate off the line. It revs very fast. It's a very fast driving motor. Red lines are close to 7000 RPM, but it's always in the top end of the rev range. It's because it's naturally aspirated. It's a Japanese motor. It really likes to be in the top end. And the electric motor takes care of everything in the lower end of the rev range. The result is it's very sprightly to drive. In fact, on an open road, it reaches 200 kilometers per hour in no time at all. That is the level of grunt on offer. Absolutely staggering. But let's talk about the most important thing here. The beauty is the gearbox. It's a 10 speed eCVT gearbox, which is basically a hybrid gearbox sourced from ASIN. And this gearbox has four regular gears, like a normal gearbox. So that means that there's no shift lag as such, there's no transmission loss in terms of gear shift. And there's a CVT gearbox as well. And both of them have been mated together. The result is that it's able to reduce the rubber band effect. And Toyota actually claims that this behaves like a dual clutch transmission. Wow! like a dual clutch transmission they say the shift speeds are as fast as a dual clutch transmission well i won't argue about that it's a very fast shifting gearbox extremely smooth and this car is so smooth and refined now unless and until you get hard into the throttle get to the higher end of the rev range and then you realize my goodness it sounds so freaking sporty a little artificial probably these speakers also making some sound but honestly it just accelerates so beautifully well what a fantastic engine what a fantastic gearbox and the hybrid system is my goodness fantastic Well, here's the funny thing, even with traction control off, this is actually a rear-wheel drive car. There is no wheel spin as such. That is the level of grip levels on this car. I mean, super duper composed. It actually feels a lot compact for a limousine of this size. I don't know how they managed to achieve that, but feels very easy to drive, very nimble and extremely agile as well. Just chick, chick, 
just jink it into a corner and it absolutely follows the path i know the steering is not aligned right now because lexus changed one of the tires and then they forgot to align the steering wheel but that said it just feels so fantastic to drive very smooth you cannot hear a thing and i'm not talking about just the engine but you can't hear a thing from the road from the outside the cabin insulation is fantastic i know it's slightly lesser than say the mercedes s class which is more insulated better insulated and the s class also has a better ride quality this also has a fantastic ride the s class has that last level of finesse which this lexus is lacking but still ride quality is fantastic it actually glides on the road kind of wafts along and in spite of the fact that it's using run flat tires there's not much noise which coming from the tires either ride quality fabulous ground clearance is also ample enough i think around 147 mm it actually doesn't have any issues on bad speed breakers at all which is shocking because i was like oh my god this is going to touch anywhere and obviously you can raise the ride height if you so wish that said what i really love is that you also get paddle shifters although you can't manually take control of gears because it's going to upshift whenever it feels like so that control is not in your hand for sure however you can get into manual here we are in manual right now and then it's showing me which gear it is in now what it actually does is that because of this hybrid transmission it's able to put it into a lower gear when it needs to so when you want performance the closely stacked gear ratios come into handy and when you want to cruise along it puts you in the highest gear possible here we're going to get into 10th right now there we are in 10th and just see you cannot hear anything it's so smooth it's so refined of course you can see that energy monitor diagram so the whole hybrid system works in a beautiful way it's a self charging hybrid okay and it's a multi stage hybrid as well what it does is basically the engine powers the wheels of course the engine also charges the battery and when you lift off that is the time when there's regenerative braking which happens because kinetic energy is being converted into electric energy and now not only in terms of braking it also happens when you just leave the throttle and the car is decelerating it continuously charges the battery and when you've got enough battery oof it also gets into ev mode so there's a pure ev mode you can drive the car on pure ev mode the battery needs to be charged for that and what it does is basically shuts the engine now because we are in sport plus mode the ev mode is deactivated like pure ev mode so we're going to shift it right now into eco mode right now i'm driving in eco mode we're driving at around let me get into 100 km per hour here onto the throttle there it responds very fast okay now we are in 100 km per hour i am going to actually get into regular drive mode i have left the throttle completely then all of a sudden this car will decide okay since he's left the throttle i can just turn it off and there it's turned off the car is running on the electric motor no sound whatsoever so smooth and this is the reason why it returns a fuel efficiency of 15.4 km per liter that is obviously the claimed economy meanwhile in the real world you will get somewhere between 7 to 9 km per liter in the city out on the highway you can actually stretch that to almost 12 to 13 km per liter but still the hybrid system works so good amazing it's absolutely fantastic it's obviously very nice to see this whole thing dancing in the instrument cluster or even on the center console because it's telling you how efficiently you are driving this car and it's got a massive 82 liter fuel tank as well but we are obviously going to get into the other mode which is sport plus because sport plus is the one which is more sprightly that said the six drive modes happen to be eco comfort there's a normal mode as well and there's custom sport and sport plus 2 now it's underpinned by the TNGAL platform which is a Toyota new global architecture L okay which underpins this car as well as the crown and a couple of other Toyota and Lexus models as well it's a rear wheel drive platform it's a modular platform and it also uses all wheel drive and talking about all wheel drive there's a Lexus LS 500 as well which produces more power at 415 and goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in 5.2 seconds it's not as efficient as the hybrid as a non hybrid version but it gets all wheel drive to better put down that power but honestly you can put down the power beautifully well on this car the way the tachometer dances is so reassuring it's so soothing as well and i love the fact that the handling of this car is super duper awesome i mean you can actually move it around from one lane to another or through the corners very aggressively it just follows the path you will be shocked when you drive this car you're like mm i never thought a toyota to be so agile or a limousine to be so agile it is just amazing the steering it's light at low speeds but weighs up beautifully well at high speeds and they have something known as vehicle dynamic integrated management something of that sort i don't even remember that what it does is it can alter a lot of parameters right from the steering to the braking to the suspension as well as how the power is delivered for a very smooth and refined ride and then you get on the throttle and every time i get on the throttle i'm so amazed by the way this engine is actually able to spin in the higher end of the range toyota can obviously give it a twin twin turbo and all that bullshit but no this is pure naturally aspirated fun in fact 
Toyota ditched the V8 from the Lexus LS because they're like a V6 hybrid does the job. It's faster, it's more efficient as well. And efficiency is the name of the game because Toyota believes that its owners also want to keep the environment green. Well, if you wanted to keep the environment green, you would not buy a Lexus LS 500, you would probably get a Toyota Igo. They have really contained rubber band effect. I'm completely surprised a CVT gearbox being so smooth and so fast as well. And the engine revs so quickly, it's mind blowing. Now, of course, they've got three variants on offer. There's the Luxury, there's the Ultra Luxury, and there's Nishijin. Nishijin basically has some sort of a motif which replicates, I think, the moon or something of that sort on the door pad. The price range is from 2.21 crores all the way till 2.54 crores. Obviously, the prices are on road Mumbai, but the prices are on the higher side. Why are they on the higher side? Of course, because this is a CBU import. It's completely imported in India right now. The S-Class obviously costs more, but when the CKD models of the S-Class come into India, they will be more attractively priced, and then one will realize that the S-Class is a step up. Yes, it is a step up because it's the latest generation of the S-Class. This is actually the pre-facelift of the Lexus LS500H. Meanwhile, the facelift of the LS500H has also been launched in the Indian market, but I'm driving the pre-facelift model, although the changes between both are really minor. Nothing drastic as such there, but where does the Lexus actually stand out? It holds on to its own by offering great craftsmanship, a lot of attention to detail, a very different luxury car experience, which is dramatically differentiated from the German options because this is a car which actually feels very special, very luxurious and definitely sets itself apart by offering something which its German rivals fail to do which happens to be exclusivity at least in the Indian market because Lexus is not selling those many units and the advantage of buying a Lexus is obviously cheaper upkeep cost, great reliability and you don't have to worry about maintenance either because at the end of the day this is a Toyota, you know how Lexus was born Toyota wanted to compete with the Germans in the US and they were like, oh, our Toyota badge is not strong enough, so we need to get another one. And they decided to make a very luxurious car and the first model was obviously the LS. The LS is established Lexus for what it is today. And it took them five, seven years along with an investment of $1 billion and 1,400 engineers to come with the first generation of the LS, which by the way, is still on the road, still driving pretty well when compared to other more complicated German options, which don't have have the long lasting and ease of maintenance of a Lexus. Yeah, I was talking about vehicle dynamics integrated management which is able to change the parameters of the car for a very smooth and refined drive. And talking about refinement, the suspension is so refined because obviously it's got air suspension along with adaptive dampers as well. But you can't really customize things as much as you can do with German models. So yeah, Lexus is a bit far behind in that sense. And obviously things are a little complex even in terms of trying to make adjustments. This is not the most ergonomically placed buttons to be honest when you're driving the car. But in the heads up display, you can see the charge and the eco and the power and all those modes as well it's just i mean very different it gives a very unique experience and because you sit so low you sort of get the vibe of driving a sports car and that's the reason lexus also has an f sport variant of the ls500 however that's not offered in india that's actually offered abroad LS actually stands for Luxury Sedan or Luxury Saloon and like I was telling you around the corners it's beautifully so well composed actually you turn off traction control not a problem because traction control automatically turns on at 60 km per hour and after 60 km per hour you cannot turn off traction control so that feature is also there just for safety I believe in a lot of Toyota and Lexus models as such you have to be careful over bad bumps because we don't have a spare wheel in this car so this is the 5th generation Lexus LS500H. I think it's a fantastic car, fabulous, feels very special, good to drive too, which is a big surprise. Usually Toyota cars are not good to drive and the steering also has feel. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That's the like button and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye-bye. I know my mood just completely transformed when I hit a corner in this car because I don't believe I would make it through. There is some amount of roll. But who really cares because it actually has a fantastic steering wheel. Bye.